Hi, I'm Simi Pasha and you're watching Good News Today. Our special series where we bring you positive stories of hope and courage. These stories don't necessarily make headlines but showcase the triumph of the human spirit. This is the best good news of the week. 50 strangers flex their muscles to save one life. They tilted a train to free a commuter. This man slipped and his leg was trapped between the carriage and the platform in Perth. Rescue workers tried for good 10 minutes to free him but failed. Soon, all others present on the platform joined hands to tilt the train and free the man. A true example of people power and power of good news. First up, the Indian Army's efforts of clearing up Tosa Maidan in Central Kashmir's Badgam district has come as a huge sigh of relief to the local population. Residents have for long been demanding that the Army's shooting range be shifted outside the city after almost 64 people lost their lives in accidents over the last 50 years. Ashraf Vani with this story. The lush meadows of Tosa Maidan beckon tourists once again. After years of serving as the playground for army artillery drills, it's now being restored. The lease to army for this place expired in April this year. In July, a local youth was killed by one of the unexploded shells in this region, prompting army to initiate Operation Fala to sanitize the area. It would take three months to declare the area as safe. Well, we are launching this mission with the intention of clearing off this area of any unexploded bombs. This place has been used for firing by the Army, BSF, CRPF, Air Force since 1964. And during the peak of the militancy between 1997 and 2005, a large number of militants uh, well, neutralized, a lot of hideouts busted, so there, there, there is a lot of leftover explosives of that period as well. So the intention is to clear this. For this, initially, we will work on the peripheral areas, then look at the impact area, and our plans are to try and clear it off by three months. It's a very good step. We do this good step, and we hope that in the future, which has been promised to us, that now there will be no firing here, so, Jiski Binaki Vajas, Jiski Vajasi, firing Ki Vajasi, Jisi Nuksan Hurai, Wab Nuksan Nihoga. To Hameye Umid He, Ki Ye Vada Hamasat Pura Hoga. To Kitni Zurura T is Joe firing range Koyasi Saf Safai Karna, Joe Asla Barut Pura Hoga. Jia, poor district came all my wishy Johem, Wohi, Percharne Kiliate, Tol Unke, Dekni Kili, Dekbal Kili, Unke Malika Jate, Ya Bache Ajate, To Yahajo explosive Yahotai, who shells Hote. वो अगर खत्म नहीं हुए होते हैं तो फट जाते हैं और लोग मर जाते हैं Since 1964 Tosa Maidan has been used by the army for its artillery drills resulting in these burnt stumps of trees massive deforestation happened over the period to facilitate firing practice of the forces Locals complain of climate change as a direct result of this practice. Janglaj, when it was dark, the atmosphere changed. We want that the rain is cold, we want that the rain is cold at that time. So, the changes in the atmosphere have also been affected. We see that the land is being landslided. The crops are being destroyed. However, Army has started plantation drive to bring Tosa Maidan back to its original glory. चार महीने जो आज के महीने सम्म के महीने तो इन महीनों में यहाँ पे विजल बढ़ाना भी है और यहाँ पे फर्स्ट ऑफिशियल्स की और प्रोटेक्शन फोर्स की प्रेजेंस जो है उसको स्ट्रांगथन भी करना है।
According to official data released by the army, a total of 10 militants were apprehended and 69 killed from the areas around Tosa Medan range between 1995 and 2007. This area of Badgam district has been extensively used by militants to infiltrate from south of Pir Panjal. But now, people around Tosa Medan hope to see better days. They want to see their cattle graze under the chinar trees and life flourish with the advent of tourists. With Ashrafani in Tosa Medan, Bureau Report headlines today. Now to the story of two families who have been tied together by a special bond formed by their grandparents almost 62 years ago. Not only do these families share a house and a business, but also a friendship that spans almost six decades. Here's their story. They are not siblings. They are best friends, friends for the past 62 years. Shyam Sundar and Thakur Das of Jodhpur grew up as next door neighbors. Together they started a business, together they bought this plot of land to build their houses in the same courtyard. It has one main entrance that opens up to two different houses joined by a door that remains open 24 hours. रिलेशंस में बदलना और दोस्ती में उतना ही पैसा कमाना जितना चाहिए डेट वाज द एम ये हमारा जो जो मकसद था और उस मकसद को आज वो हमने पूरा किया और हमारी फैमिली पूरी कर रही है नेक्स्ट जनरेशन कर रही है नाउ उटी थर्ड जनरेशन का टाइम है द टू फ्रेंड्स स्टार्टेड ऑफ अ बिजनेस ऑफ मेकिंग रिकॉर्ड्स फॉर एचएमवी विद इक्वल इन्वेस्टमेंट्स लेटर दे स्टार्टेड अदर वेंचर्स but unlike others, this joint venture didn't breed mistrust amongst them. The tradition today is taken forward by their sons. We are watching them from childhood and from childhood. I have never seen them in any way. And both of them are like a sky. No one is like a sky. No one is like a sky. We have seen them in the form of a sky. They are like 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 a sky. एक साथ ऑफिस से घर आते हैं एक साथ इनका लंच का टाइम है एक के साथ डिनर का टाइम है एक के समय ये ड्रग खाते हैं दवाई खाने का समय भी एक जैसा ही है सोने का भी समय इनका एक जैसा ही है द फ्रेंड्स नॉट ओनली ऑप्टेड टू स्टे टुगेदर दे इवन गॉट मैरिड ऑन द सेम डे व्हेन ठाकुर दास इज वाइफ पास अवे टेन ईयर्स अगो इट वॉज शाम सुंदर फैमिली दैट टुक चार्ज ऑफ हिस हाउस होल्ड तो मुझे कभी बता ही नहीं चला कि मेरे ससुर जी हैं या ठाकुर दत्त जी हैं हमें हमेशा यहाँ पे ऐसा ही देखा कि पहल उनको उनको ही दिया था हमारी सास भी ऐसे ही बोलती थी कि आंटी तुम्हारे लिए पहले अगर पियर जाओ बाहर जाओ तो उनको ही बोल के जाओगे कहीं भी जाओगे तो उनको पता होना चाहिए कि आप कहाँ जा रहे हो दिवाली की शॉपिंग वगैरह जब भी करते थे तो सब हमारे अंकल ही करवाते थे जो भी हमारा इकट्ठा शॉपिंग होती थी इधर उधर जो भी बर्तन कपड़े बच्चों के बड़ों के the lifelong friends are in their 80s today. They have handed over their business to the next generation. But their habit of shared meals still continues and the families of Thakur Das and Sham Sundar celebrate their 62-year-old friendship, cherishing the memory of togetherness. With Naveen Dutt in Jodhpur, Shujoy headlines today. Australian cricketer Brett Lee has come up with a way of repaying India for the adulation he has earned from this cricket crazy country. Spread across metros, Brett Lee's music therapy schools are teaching musicians how to heal children who have been through trauma and illnesses through music. Rasesh Mandani with this story. Three years
years ago, these kids had very few options in life. Growing up in Mumbai's Dharavi, their future stretched endlessly towards a struggle to survive in India's largest slum. Welcome back. You're watching Good News Today with me, Siddharth Sharma. Now, 3D scanning technology has multitude of uses. But did you know that recently it's being used to save art from becoming extinct? That's right. A museum in Germany is doing just that. Let's take a look. Scanning is expected to preserve art for the ages. Well, at least that's what art historians in Frankfurt say. They're using a new high speed three dimensional scanner on a 500 year old sculpture to create a digital archive record in a matter of minutes. The idea behind the 3D scanning is to preserve the outer shape of art digitally that will stand the test of time. That way, if disaster or war destroyed the original, the last resort of making a replica of the original could be achieved. While there are 3D scanners out there, what stands out with this one is its time and cost efficiency. Compared to traditional 3D digitization, we have automated the process. This means that while before about a half a day was needed to digitize a bust because it was necessary to circle around the object in order to cover the whole surface, now all you have to do is put the object into our scanner, it passes through, and that takes one minute. Once an object is scanned and reproduced digitally, the data is then available to researchers around the world. This is certainly good news because works of art then don't need to be shipped globally to be examined by experts and reduces the risk of damage in the process. Art historians are already calling the new technology a game changer for historic artifacts. The technology is a revolution. This technology is a revolution. As far as the documentation of cultural goods goes and also regarding research and the way we handle our objects for the public. In research, we can now make additions and reconstructions. We can reassemble objects which were torn apart. This is a huge new opportunity. Currently, this 3D scanner is only being used in a handful of museums around Germany but is expected to become commercially available by 2015. Computer scientists from Hong Kong University have unveiled the most accurate facial recognition technology in the world. The algorithm has scored near perfect 99.15% on the rating charts. This could prove to be one game-changing technology in crowd security. Let's take a look. Surveillance cameras have proved a powerful tool when monitoring large crowds for signs of danger. But pinpointing a suspicious person or activity can be like finding a needle in a haystack. But soon, that job may prove easier. Thanks to a team of scientists from Hong Kong University who have developed the world's most accurate facial recognition software to date. Uh, a couple of months ago, uh, we uh, uh, got a result uh, that uh, actually surpassed the human performance on uh, recognizing face. The groundbreaking software scored a near perfect 99.15%, besting humans and all other facial recognition programs. In fact, the program is so accurate that it can recognize whether two photographed faces are of the same person, regardless of changes in lighting, makeup, and camera angles. The team says that their software could discourage antisocial behavior and help law enforcement to seek out individuals among a crowd of thousands. By interpreting facial expressions, it could also predict violent activity before it starts. 
the video surveillance uh, they only focus on small number of uh, objects and in the very simple environment and now we're, what we are doing we target on thousands of objects uh, targets and in very complex the environment so this uh, problem is uh, very very challenging it's a problem that these scientists believe can be solved as computer processing speeds increase with time but for now the good news is that this software could lay the foundation for the next generation of security systems that will keep people safe and ultimately save lives bureau report headlines today in what is being termed as one of the rarest multiple surgeries in the indian medical history three iraqi siblings suffering from a rare genetic disorder who needed their livers to be transplanted were operated upon successfully in India this week. Salman Parvez gets you this good news. The life of the Ibrahim family from Iraq came to a standstill when they realized that their young children were suffering from a life-threatening disease. Ibrahim aged 4, Sozan aged 10 and Lozan aged 11 were all diagnosed with progressive familial intrahepatic cholestasis. An extremely rare genetic disorder where bile from the liver cannot flow to the small intestine. The disorder led to stunted growth, jaundice and a diseased liver amongst the three siblings. Their only hope for survival was an extremely complicated liver transplant, something that could not be performed in Iraq. <laughs> Travelling from one country to another seeking treatment brought the troubled family to India, where their salvation came in the form Hello. of Dr. Vivek Vij, who gave the Ibrahim yes, children a new lease of life. Good? <laughs> This is a rare genetic disease in which the bile salts from the body don't get excreted and slowly and slowly liver converts into what is called as the end stage liver disease cirrhosis. And then the only treatment which remains available to these patients is liver transplantation. All three livers were generously donated by loving family members, but the success rate of such transplants are usually slim, especially given the siblings' young ages and the rare nature of the disease itself. Are you feeling good? However, in an amazing display of fortitude and medical skill, a team of surgeons led by Dr. Vij at Noida's Fortis Hospital persevered for nearly 12 hours for each transplant. Suzanne, go back Kurdistan. Men. And in the end, successfully managed to save not one, but three precious lives. The surgery was done uh, um, <clears throat> and post-operatively post they stayed for about two to three weeks time and about a week's time in ICU. And uh, other than the minor problems, all the children did very well after transplantation. Now they are very hale and hearty, they are eating well, their growth has, uh, uh, the growth phase has come back, they are, they are growing, eating well, disease free and now they are ready to go to Iraq in a very short period of time. For parents Siddiqui and Bushra, the nightmare is finally over. They believe that the successful surgery was nothing short of a miracle. <laughs> After remaining under observation for a week, the children have been deemed completely healthy and discharged. Though they are happy with the care they received in India, the Ibrahim family are eager to go back to their homeland despite the strife. With Salman Parvez, your report headlines today. That's all we could pack into this edition of Good News Today. You too can send in your feedback. Tweet the team at HLT Good News. Have a great weekend.